Today we are reading about hurricanes and the kids made some pictures about rivers and bridges and hurricanes and we're going to show you how they did that and then we're going to read a book about hurricanes. Sail down the river. Let's go. Whoa, this is rapid. Under the bridge. Oh no, there's a bridge again. What do we do? Hurricane by John Rocco. How a hurricane forms. One, warm ocean water evaporates and the moisture rises to form thunderstorms. Then when winds begin to spiral upward and outward, the entire storm starts to spin. And when it reaches 74 miles an hour, a category one hurricane is born. When the storm passes over land, the supply of moisture and heat is cut off and the storm gradually slows down. And there's a hurricane wind scale. Category one is winds from 74 to 95 miles an hour with minimal damage. Category two, winds 96 to 110 miles an hour with moderate damage. Category three, winds 111 to 129 miles an hour with extensive damage. Category four, winds 130 to 156 miles an hour with extreme damage. Category five, winds 157 plus miles an hour with catastrophic damage. To my friend, Jay Premiano, who taught me the value of having access to the sea. This is my dock. Really, it's the neighborhood's dock, but nobody ever comes here except me. It's very old and splintery, and it's my favorite place in the whole world. It reaches way out over the river, and from here I can fish or crab or swim, or just watch the minnows dart between the rocks. The water that flows underneath my dock comes all the way from the sea. At the end of each day, I walk home past all the other houses in my neighborhood, but today feels different. The air is still and the sound of hammering echoes down the street. Even my dad is acting strange. There's a hurricane coming, get inside. At dinner, my parents didn't say much. I tell them that the best fishing comes right after a big storm. Unless it destroys something. That's true. That night, the wind roars and rumbles, like the sound of a thousand waves pounding the shoreline. My window rattles and the whole house shakes. The rain doesn't fall in drops, it slashes sideways as if shot from a fire hose. I watch the river creep up my street, carrying with it anything that can float. I worry our house might wash away. How is that car still there? I don't know. 
I shut my eyes tight and try to sleep, imagining what might wash up underneath my dock. The next morning is silent. The wind stops roaring and my windows stop rattling. I grab my gear and rush outside. I almost don't recognize my neighborhood. It was like a giant angry monster stomped through it. A giant angry monster did. When I get to my dock, I see that the monster destroyed that too. I asked all my neighbors for help. Sorry, I wish I could. We can't, but end up helping them instead. Everyone needs help. By the end of the day, it starts to look like our neighborhood again, but my dock is still wrecked. I know what I have to do. I have to rebuild it. I grab all the tools I think I need and get to work. Most of the wood is rotted, but I use whatever I can find. And day after day, I continue to work on my dock. Just when I'm about to give up, help arrives. The whole neighborhood comes down. Because he helped everybody else. Sure They're going to help him. Sure enough. We put in brand new pilings and bolt new boards between them. We nail down the decking and cover the tops of each piling with fiberglass to keep them from rotting. Finally, we add cleats for boats to tie up to and a railing to make the new ramp safe. Together, we rebuild my dock. and it becomes our dock. <coughs> it's my favorite place in the world. <coughs> Come back tomorrow, Camarissa.